The fact is, a fundamental pillar of the Flat Earth model does not hold up to real-world observations, and the GLOBE model does. I think we're done. Hey everybody, there's a new trend among aspiring members of the Secret Knowledge Club that come across my path, and that's Flat Earth Theory. Flat Earth theories are nothing new, of course, but in the past I've only seen it being pushed by biblical creationists who feel that a flat earth supports their literal interpretation of the Bible. But now, the flat earth model is getting promoted by some anti-NASA, anti-secret government cabal conspiracy theorists. Why? Well, if flat earth theories are correct, then our accepted laws of physics would be incorrect. And if those laws are incorrect, how could NASA have done any of the things people claim when all their technology is grounded in incorrect physics? And let's not kid around. Fundamental laws of nature would have to change for flat earth models to be true. Gravity would be situational at best, as it wouldn't pull toward the center of mass on the earth, as current theories say. It somehow would not attract the sun and the moon, which for some reason still get to be round, which are much smaller than the earth. And completely unknown forces would control the movements of these two objects. We know that Mercury and Venus pass between us and the sun on a regular basis, so those puppies need to be in there somewhere and be controlled by similar heretofore unobserved forces. And light, let's not even talk about light. We know that light from the sun illuminates only half of the earth at any one time. But if a flat earth is true, there would have to be entirely different laws for the propagation of light to explain why the entire earth isn't illuminated by the sun to some degree at all times. Now, flat earthers don't have any testable theories about any of these claims. They don't have any mechanisms or physics, so I can't address things that don't exist. But there is a fundamental aspect of the flat earth model that I can address, a weight-bearing pillar of that theory. And if you eliminate that weight-bearing pillar, the rest collapses. There is a very basic claim of the flat earthers that the sun is not a huge object millions of miles away, but a small one nearby. As evidence for this concept, flat earthers go back to the first known calculation of the earth's circumference by Eratosthenes in 240 BCE. Flat earthers like to go back to this calculation because it's low tech. High-tech modern measurements with satellites are dismissed as part of the global conspiracy. A stake was placed in the ground with the sun directly overhead, casting no shadow. Another stake was placed 400 miles away at the same time. It had a shadow. That shadow was measured, and with the sun theoretically so far away, the sun's beams are parallel, so the shadow could only be explained by a curved earth of a certain size. Flat earthers will point out that if the sun were a small object nearby, this same effect can be explained by a flat earth. That distance in size is 3,100 miles away and 34 miles wide. And in this circumstance of 400 miles, that scenario holds true. But as a comprehensive model, it doesn't hold up. Now you may be saying, Jerry, how can you say it works under this circumstance, but it doesn't hold up? It either works or it doesn't, right? No, not really. This has come up in science before. For example, in classical Newtonian physics, we know how the addition of velocities work. That should be Galilean, not Newtonian. You have a gun that fires a ball at 50 miles per hour, you stick that on a car going 50 miles per hour, and you fire it. You add up the velocities and you get a ball traveling 100 miles per hour relative to the ground. But it turns out, as good as this model is, it only holds true at slow speeds, speeds significantly less than the speed of light. If this vehicle could go 0.75c and the gun could fire at 0.75c, the theory says that the resulting velocity of the ball would be 1.5 times the speed of light, which doesn't hold. Einstein came up with a new formula that not only covers the velocity at slow speeds, but also accurately holds for the relativistic speeds. This is the same situation with the near-sun theory of flat earthers. When dealing with small distances like 400 miles, the theory holds up. But when you get to large distances, it completely falls apart. But luckily, the globe earth and distant sun model covers where the flat earth falls flat. Flat earthers say that the sun is 3,100 miles away and only 34 miles wide. An object of that size would take up about 0.63 degrees in the sky. Now we know from measurements that the sun is about 0.53 degrees. That's about a 20% margin of error, but we'll ignore that basic flaw. I picked two cities very near the equator, Bogota, Colombia, and Accra, Ghana. They are 5,087 miles apart. Using this sun position calculator at this website, I found a date when the sun would be directly overhead in Bogota. It happens to be September 10th at 1152 AM local time. Now you can check the accuracy of this calculator yourself by putting in your longitude and latitude, date and time, and time zone. It will tell you where the sun should be in the sky, and you can go outside and check. I did. It holds up. 
Now, geometry says that if the sun is 3,100 miles overhead in Bogota and Accra is 5,087 miles away, then the sun would be 5,957 miles away from the city of Accra on a flat earth. At that distance, the sun should look considerably smaller, take up 0.327 degrees, but it doesn't. It looks the same. Also, if the earth was flat, the sun should be at 31 degrees above the horizontal, but it's not. It's at 16 degrees. A small, close sun over a flat earth does not account for the real-world position of the sun over long distance on the earth. But it just so happens that this large-scale data conforms perfectly to a model of a curved earth of some 24,000 miles in circumference and a distant sun 93 million miles away. The fact is, a fundamental pillar of the flat earth model does not hold up to real-world observations, and the globe model does. I think we're done.